Ilioinguinal approach according to Letonal. A brief video. This video presentation retrieved from the Book of Operative Approaches in Orthopedic Surgery and Traumatology. Thanks for the Fridium Kirschbaumer, Kuno Wieser, Karl Joachim Wirth and Alexander Avakaro. They contributed the science and medicine with their great book. Operative Approaches in Orthopedic Surgery and Traumatology, Fridium Kirschbaumer, Kuno Wieser, Karl Joachim Wirth, Alexander Avakaro. Dash, second edition. Georg, Team Verlag, Stuttgart. Principal indications. Fractures of the acetabulum, anterior wall, anterior column, transverse fractures, combined fractures, two column fractures. Pelvic ring fractures with sacroilike joint rupture. Fractures of the ala of the ilium. Tumors? Osteomyelitis. Positioning and incision. The patient is placed in the supine position on a standard or extension table if indicated. If intraoperative three-dimensional radiographs or navigation are planned, a carbon table should be used. The leg on the affected side is draped to allow free movement. The anterior superior iliac spine and iliac crest are marked. The approach consists of three windows, which, by sequential retraction of the soft tissues, provide good exposure of the inside of the ala of the ilium, the quadrilateral surface, and the superior pubic ramus as far as the symphysis. To open the first window, which is also used for anterior stabilization of sacroilike instability, the incision is made from the posterior portion of the iliac crest as far as the anterior superior iliac spine. For full ilioinguinal access, the incision is continued as far as the symphysis. The tendinous attachment of the external oblique fascia is now divided on the iliac crest just lateral to the anterior superior iliac spine figure. The iliac fossa is exposed subperiostally from the internal surface of the pelvis as far as the linear terminalis and anterior sacroilike ligaments figure. The sacroilike joint and lateral parts of the sacrum can now be exposed. The lumbosacral trunk runs approximately 15 to 20 millimeters medial to the sacroilike joint directly on the surface of the sacrum and should be spared during dissection. The risk of damaging the lumbosacral trunk can be minimized by strictly subperiosteal dissection. Dissection of the second window starts at the anterior superior iliac spine by opening the fascia of the external oblique muscle, with exposure of the spermatic cord or uterine ligament, which is snared together with the ilioinguinal nerve, figure. The posterior wall of the inguinal canal is now opened with division of the common origin of the internal oblique, transversus abdominis, and transversalis fascia from the inguinal ligament. A strip of inguinal ligament approximately 1 cm wide should remain to facilitate subsequent reapproximation and anatomical closure of the inguinal canal. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, which must be spared, is exposed laterally. 1. Psoas major. 2. Ilicus. 3. Iliopectineal arch. 4. Spermatic cord. 5. Iliac fossa. 6. External iliac artery and vein. 7. Superficial circumflex iliac artery and vein. 8. Iliohypogastric nerve. 9. Femoral nerve. 10. Lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. The vascular space is then carefully dissected. The iliopectineal arch is exposed by bluntly retracting the vessels medially and the iliopsoas and femoral nerve laterally, and it can be divided sharply as far as its attachment to the iliopubic eminence. The iliopsoas is now snared, figure. 1. Anterior superior iliac spine. 
2 anterior inferior iliac spine 3 iliopubic eminence 4 pecten pubis 5 iliac fossa 6 psoas major 7 external iliac artery and vein 8 femoral nerve 9 lateral femoral cutaneous nerve 10 genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve 11 femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve 12 spermatic cord The third window is located between the snared vessels and the lateral border of rectus abdominis. Adequate exposure of the medial pubic ramus is achieved by careful dissection and retraction of rectus abdominis. There may be anastomoses between the external iliac or inferior epigastric artery and the obturator artery, corona mortis, which should be ligated prior to bone exposure. If dissection of the symphysis is required, this is done by splitting the linear alba, if possible, without dividing the attachment of the rectus abdominis, figure. One iliac fossa. Two iliopubic eminence. Three pecten pubis. Four pubic symphysis. Five inguinal ligament. Six rectus abdominis. Seven pectineus. 8 source major, 9 external iliac artery and vein, 10 dot femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve. The following anatomical structures lie between the split aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle and the anterior pelvic bone as seen from lateral to medial, iliacus, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, the femoral nerve, psoas major, psoas minor, the genitofemoral nerve, the iliopectineal arch, the femoral vessels, and the spermatic cord with the ilioinguinal nerve. Located behind the symphysis, which is revealed at the medial angle of the wound, is the bladder. Craniad dissection of the peritoneum exposes the fifth lumbar vertebra, the promontory, and the iliac vessels and testicular vessels. One fifth lumbar vertebra, two external oblique, three internal oblique, four transversus abdominis, five aponeurosis of external oblique, six aponeurosis of internal oblique, seven pyramidalis, eight rectus abdominis, nine psoas major, ten psoas minor, var. 11 iliacus 12 pecten pubis 13 common iliac artery 14 internal iliac artery 15 external iliac artery 16 testicular vessels 17 superior vesical vessels 18 inferior epigastric vessels 19 superficial circumflex iliac vessels 20 common iliac vein, 21 external iliac vein, 22 ilioinguinal nerve, 23 genitofemoral nerve, 24 genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve, 25 femoral branch of the genito, femoral nerve, 26 obturator nerve, 27 femoral nerve, 28 lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of the thigh 29 ilia hypogastric nerve 30 spermatic cord 31 vas deferens wound closure anatomical wound closure is required to avoid a postoperative hernia Rectus abdominis is reattached with subsequent reconstruction of the posterior wall of the inguinal canal using an absorbable continuous suture, figure. Adequate patency of the internal inguinal ring is essential. The iliopectineal arch does not have to be reconstructed. Finally, the aponeurosis of the external oblique is reattached, and the wound is closed, figure. Dangers. 
Frequent complications of this approach are bleeding from the nutrient channels, hemorrhage from the corona mortis, injury to the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, and hernia if the inguinal region is not reconstructed in form. However, many other complications are possible because of the extensive dissection. If the operation is prolonged and the vessels are manipulated extensively, medical prophylaxis for thrombosis warrants particular attention. This video presentation retrieved from the Book of Orthopedic Surgical Approaches. Thanks for the Miller, Mark, Arben of Bobby Chabra, James Alexander Brown, Joseph S. Park, Francis H. Shen and David B. Weiss. They contributed the science and medicine with their great book. Miller, Mark, Arben of Bobby Chabra, James Alexander Brown, Joseph S. Park. Francis H. Shen and David B. Weiss. Orthopedic Surgical Approaches. 2008. Ilioinguinal Approach to the Pelvis. Background. The ilioinguinal approach comprises three windows that may not all need to be fully opened or used for a given approach. Careful study of the injury films and preoperative planning will indicate which windows to use. The modified Stopa approach, discussed in more detail at the end of the section, is a variation on the ilioinguinal approach that does not use the middle window at all. Draw the incision from medial 2 cm above the pubic symphysis curving laterally and superiorly to the asis and then following the iliac, pressed posterior to just beyond its maximum lateral convexity, approximately 10 cm proximal to the asis, figure. Begin with the lateral aspect of the incision, stopping at the asis, perform the superficial and deep portions of this window first so that venous bleeding from the perforators in the iliac wing may be controlled with packing while dissecting the second and third windows. Lateral window. Divide the skin and subcutaneous tissue in line with the incision down to the iliac crest. Incise the fascia along the superior border of the crest and elevate medially, staying on bone until the inner table of the pelvis is identified. Blunt dissection with an elevator can be used to elevate the iliacus off the inner table of the pelvis superiorly to the SI joint and inferiorly and medially to the pelvic brim and the iliopsoas tendon. Perforators through the iliac wing may require bone wax for hemostasis. Pack this area with moist lap pads and continue to the middle and medial window dissection. Middle and medial window. Continue the incision from the asis to the pubic symphysis or slightly beyond, divide the subcutaneous tissue sharply or with electrocautery to expose the external abdominal oblique fascia, which inserts into the inguinal ligament. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve will be near the medial edge of the asis, but its course is somewhat variable up to 3 cm. Identify the superficial inguinal ring at the medial aspect of the dissection figure. Middle and medial window. Divide the external oblique fascia, taking 1 to 2 mm of the inguinal ligament with it to allow better closure. Medially avoid injuring the spermatic cord slash round ligament with blunt dissection around these structures. Figure, identify and protect the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, which may require dissecting it free to allow retraction. Middle and medial window. Incise the internal abdominal oblique fascia carefully because the femoral vessels and nerve are just beneath it, medially incise the rectus sheath 1 cm proximal to its insertion to allow repair and elevate, figure, finger dissection behind the pubis will develop the space of retius between the bladder and pubis, the inferior epigastric artery and vein cross just medial to the inguinal ring and should be ligated. Middle and medial window. 
Use a lap pad to elevate the extraperitoneal fat from the femoral vessels, bluntly dissect the femoral sheath medially and the femoral nerve and iliopsoas tendon laterally and protect these groups with slings. Figure, avoid excessive retraction on the femoral vessels to avoid damage to intertwined lymphatics identify the iliopectineal fascia deep between femoral sheath medially and femoral nerve laterally and carefully divide this down to the pelvic brim and posteriorly toward the SI joint. In older persons it may be attenuated. Carefully retract to the femoral vessels medially, look for anastomosis between the femoral and obturator vessels, corona mortis, and ligative present. This process leaves three windows to work between, figure. A lateral window between the iliacus, and the lateral portion of the incision through which the iliac wing and sacroilike joint are exposed. A middle window between the psoas, slash, femoral nerve and the femoral vessels for exposure of and or clamp placement for the anterior column and medial wall of the acetabulum, and iliopubic eminence. A medial window between the femoral vessels and the medial aspect of the incision to the pubic symphysis, exposing the superior rami, care should be taken to retract and protect the bladder in this window. Closure. Meticulous care must be taken to repair the transversalis, and external oblique muscle and fascia, and the inguinal ring to prevent herniation. The rectus abdominis and fascia also should be repaired accordingly. A suction drain in the space of retius and another along the iliac wing is advised. Extensile measures. The medial aspect can be extended to the approach to the pubic symphysis when indicated posteriorly. It can be extended to expose the anterior aspect of the sacroilike joint. Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.